one thing contributing to this factor is not even really the hotness of the market objectively if you want to think of it like that. in today's video another edition of the treb resale remark for the toronto and gta real estate markets i'm going to go through the numbers the trends and everything else you should know let's get to it Hello everyone, this is Sam from Sabiri 6 Real Estate and Remax Realtron Real Tank. As always, back with another video here for you guys today. As always, feel free to subscribe, comment, and like. Your support is much appreciated in that regard. If you don't want to, don't do that. And you can find my contact information in the description box. In today's video, I'm gonna be running down, down the numbers, the trends, and everything you should know about the latest resale market reports uh, with regards to the Toronto, GTA, and York Region real estate market. So this accounts for all the numbers with regards to condos, uh, semi-detached, detached, different areas and different factors in the month of February. As always, I can't run down every single thing on this report uh, that I even find significant. I'm just gonna run down the most important things in my opinion that you should know. But if you have any other questions, feel free to contact me. As I said, my contact information is in the description box or leave a comment. If I were to run down everything, this would be far too long. Anyways, let's start with the main items and then focus a little bit on the particulars. When we compare February 2021 to February 2020, we saw an increase of 52% in total residential transactions, going from 7,193 to 10,000 total residential transactions. This is not surprising by any means, with the rampant bidding wars occurring all over the GTA for freehold properties, anywhere from townhomes to detached properties and the condo market slowly picking up, as we will get to the numbers later, we see it clearly represented in the total number of transactions. Now, as I've said in the past, this by itself cannot really tell you anything about the market because you can have a case where the market is on a horrible downtrend, sellers and owners are losing money and they have no choice to cut the losses and sell. In that scenario, total residential transactions would be up as well. So residential transactions, this figure, this category by itself cannot really tell you anything about the market. But as we will get to it in the next item, uh, this tells us that the market is hot. And by next item, I mean average price. Year over year, the average price, we saw an increase of 14.9% from 910,000 in February of 2020 to 1,045,000 in February of 2021. And once again, this is exactly what I mean. Uh, the residential transactions in conjunction with this shows us the market is very high. And it's not even on paper. I saw it every day working in February for condo buyers, condo sellers, for freehold buyers, freehold sellers. One thing contributing to this factor is not even really the hotness of the market objectively, if you want to think of it like that. It's due to the rampant bidding wars in the Toronto real estate market and the York region real estate market that drive up the price above what the, what the commodity is actually worth, right? When you do induce a bidding war, buyers often do end up overpaying. And fortunately for sellers and unfortunately for buyers, this is represented in the sale price. Now, bidding wars can also explain this following number as well. We're in the average days on market. The average days a property stays on the market before it is officially sold. Not closed, but sold on paper. And the reason, once again, these rampant bidding wars that we experienced in the month of February for freehold properties can explain this is because when you are trying to induce a bidding war, you are only putting the property on the market for one to seven days maximum, most likely three to four days, right? Uh, and when you're doing that, naturally, you're just gonna drive down the average, right? Because we're, if you have a hot market where there aren't a lot of bidding wars, uh, a property can stay on the market for 20 days and sell above asking, sell uh, you know in a, in, a, in a very expedient fashion, in a very seller-friendly deal. But nonetheless, it will show and represent in the total figures for 15 to 20 days on the market. However, bidding wars, by mere inherent fact of its strategy, uh, really drive this number down, uh, a number that would have been driven down anyways in the hot market, but even more so, exponentially so. Once again, in contrast to what I've said in the past about the condo market, where the condo market would slow any of these items down, which is the average sold price or the number of days of market or the total residential transaction. Now the condo market in certain areas still well below year over year, but is compared to previous months recovering slowly and steadily. And as a result, condominiums as a section are no longer weighing down uh, the total real estate market for sellers but I'll talk more about the condo market uh, later in this video. Now let's break down the average prices per property type in certain areas. So we have the 416 and the 905. 
Although this isn't literally 100% accurate, but it gets to the point. You can think of the 416 as Toronto, so Etobicoke, Central Toronto, Scarborough. Once again, it gets at the point, but if you really want to be particular about it, it's not the most accurate way to think about it. Now, before we get to semi-detached and detached, let's start with townhomes. This is what I found very, very fascinating. When we look at the entire area, so the 416 and the 905, uh, basically all Treb areas and the GTA at large, the average cost of a townhome was in the 800s, $850,000. This represents a 17% increase year over year. Now that's impressive enough, but the interesting fact is here, once we break it down, so no longer looking at the entirety of the uh, GTA, but breaking it down per 905 and 416, we see that in the 416, the average cost of a townhome was 913,000, which is once again, impressive and worrisome for buyers, but you know, good for sellers. But when we look at the 905, we see that was 845,000. Well, why is that interesting? You may ask, because in the, in the, in the city of Toronto, the 416 is still more expensive. Yes, that's true. But if we were to take a look at the percentage increases, we see that in the 905, it actually increased by 20% year over year. Whereas in the 416, it only increased by 7%. As we will get to it, a similar thing holds for semi-detached properties, but why, is, why do I find this most interesting about townhomes? Well, well, according to the numbers and in conjunction with my daily experience, because I purchased a townhome just recently for a client in the, four, in the 905 rather, in Vaughan, uh, and we paid a hefty price for it. It seems to me that a lot of people who are being priced out of the detached property market, and even in some cases, the semi-detached property market, before they're shifting immediately, to the condominium market, which I discussed in a previous video where I said there's a lot of buyer fatigue uh, with uh, detached, semi-detached properties, even freehold properties, and as a result, they're shifting to the condominium market, and, and that's why you can experience an influx of demand on the selling side where that demand lacked in the first place. Well, it appears to me that before they go completely to the condo market, a lot of buyers are now saying, okay, we're priced out of detached properties. There are too many bidding wars. We've put offers on five, six properties and we're just tired of this. Let's go to the townhome market. Let's look at townhomes before we completely shift to the condominium market. Now that initial shift I discussed to the condo market has occurred. I see it every day and I also see it in the numbers. However, it appears to me that I underestimated initially that there will be that layover of that shift, if you can think of it as a layover, where people will first consider the townhomes, not townhome condos, but townhome freeholds. And then if that doesn't work out, they'll go to the condo market. A lot of people skip that layover, they went immediately to the condo market, but I underestimated how many people would actually first go to the townhome market. And once again, I saw this, there were a lot of bidding wars with townhomes. Now, it appears as if it has somewhat slowed down a bit, but that's a topic for a future video as to why that has occurred, in my opinion mainly due to the fact that the same buyer fatigue it appears to be occurring with townhomes but anyway now let's go to semi-detached once again the average cost of a semi-detached property in treb gta at large was a million fifty which represents a 20 percent increase year over year however much like townhome portion if we break it down per area and we look at 416 just the 416 so the city of toronto so the city of Toronto, really, we see the average price was 1.3 million, which represented a 9% increase, but the biggest percentage increase occurred in the 905, seeing a 25% increase year over year. Of course, detached properties remains to be the most expensive and the percentage increases are still staggering. Good for sellers, not really good for buyers, where the average price is 1.3 million across the Treb areas, GTA, Toronto. But when we break it down, once again, to the 905 and 416, we see in 416, the average price is 1.6 million and the average price is 1.3 million in, and the average price in the 905 is 1.3 million. Starting with the general figures, the average cost of a condo across all areas, once again, the 416 plus the 905, just the GTA and the Treb areas was, was $642,000. Now, if we break that down to the city of Toronto, just the city of Toronto, the 416, that's $676,000 in the month of February, 2021. And the GTA, the average price was $563,000. So it shouldn't be anything shocking with regards to the fact that the average cost of a condo in the city of Toronto is still more expensive than the average cost of a condo in uh, the GTA. But what is the interesting thing here? Well, as I will reveal with the numbers, the interesting thing, and this is a very nuanced point that a lot of people cannot understand. And I've gotten some backlash for this because I frankly think people either don't wanna listen or can't listen, that the condo market is slowly recovering and the prices are increasing. However, 
it is still a buyer's market. So what does that mean? It means the condo market, according to the previous month, so the preceding month, the lows of uh, December and January and even November, which was, you know, truly November and December were the lowest, but January was still low. Comparison to those months, the prices have gone up, as I will reveal. However, when we compare it year over year, so last year, prices are still down. There isn't anything contradictory or inconsistent when I, when I say that the prices are increasing, yet it's still a buyer's market. And I, let me show you the numbers here. As I said previously, the average cost of a condominium, according to the condominium market at large, was in the month of February 2021, $642,000. Where do we see that prices are increasing? Well, the same figure for the month of January 2021 was $600,000. So the average cost of a condominium across all areas was $600,000, whereas now it's $642,000 when we compare January 2021 to February 2021. And let me add this, it is seasonally adjusted. So of course we have fluctuation in prices in seasons, right? But even putting the seasonal fluctuation, the normal course of real estate cycle aside, it's still an increase. That shows you the prices are increasing However, this will show you that it's still a buyer's market compared to year over year because, as I said, 642 for February of 2021. Well, if we look at February of 2020, the average cost of a condominium across all areas was $666,000. If we break it down by 416905, we will see a similar thing. Anyways, those are the major trends and key takeaways. I wanted to discuss the numbers. However, there are more coming. I'm going to discuss in separate videos coming out later in this week and next week where I discuss certain trends and numbers in more specificity and particular to certain areas that are not as large. Discuss things on a smaller and fine-tuned scale. Anyways, thanks for watching. If you have any further questions, feel free to subscribe, comment, rate, and review. And yes, have a safe day and stay in touch. Thanks.